confirmed us that he, that he turned off all his antique devices his yeah. cuckoo clock <laughs> his so it will not be antiques roadshow in here today <laughs> <laughs> i know but eric look this is how pathetic i am that's it's a nice like, one but it's like a fake rotary because it's not an actual rotary uh, it still has okay. numbers no, but no, no, no. i actually no, got no, no, one no, to no. look like a rotary <laughs> dial phone oh, even good. though it's yeah okay you got to do the real deal yeah. yeah that's how you know you're super old okay good morning eric <laughs> <laughs> i'm wearing my uh, madam vice president t-shirt for you oh good because thank you, once again, you're the only one pointing out, uh, you just said more awful Harris coverage, condescending article, New York Times claims Harris, quote, is a politician who's always struggled to define herself, uh. according to who? And you said New York Times continues illogical media narrative that Harris taking on substantive issues like immigration or voting rights is bad news for Harris. <laughs> thank you. I mean, why, right? <laughs> Well, she really got beat up last week, right? Because people didn't like her answer to the Lester Holt question about uh, about going to the border. Right. And, um, right. you know, this was, this was obviously during her trip to Guatemala and Mexico and right wing media and the Republican Party grabbed that clip. And then, uh, you know, the mainstream said, oh, you know, she's not ready for prime time. You know, Lester Holt was basically badgering her. Why? Why don't you go to you go to the border? Why don't you go to the border? That, that's. That's a Republican talking point. She's not in charge of border security, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah. She is. She is over. She's taken on this responsibility of dealing diplomatically uh, with Central American countries, urging them not to come, uh, providing economic aid to improve their local conditions. But the day that announcement was made, uh, Fox News said she was in charge of border security. So they've been hitting her and hitting her, and, and the mainstream press likes it. It's a, it's a good gotcha question. So anyway. Uh, you know, the whole, you know, CNN announced her entire trip had been overshadowed by that one 30 second back and forth. Forget the fact that she gave a, you know, a 30 minute uh, press conference in Mexico and spoke, you know, extemporaneously in great detail about the issues facing yeah. the region. None of that mattered. Uh, you know, uh, for one thing, there's just no drama in this administration. I mean, there is no, yeah. you know, there's no, there's no White House gossip. There hasn't been a sentence of scandal in, in five months. So I think the press, you know, the D.C. press really shows up for work that first day, you know, every day, kind of wondering, like, yeah. what are we going to do? Well, so, yeah, I think ahead. they I think they're they're anxious to go after someone. And, and they decided the gotcha press was going to really, go, um, you know, uh, focus on Kamala Harris last well, week. And as I was saying, Eric, Google it. There's a million pictures of her at the border. Mm -hmm. She was a senator from California. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah, just yeah. because she doesn't go for her camouflage Ted Cruz, you know, right. boat in the Rio Grande photo op. You know, as exactly. you said, she gave right. actually a really good speech about the root causes in Guatemala that she right. was there to to talk about and to do something about. But, but you know, I, this is what gets the press. Lara Trump, like, this is not, I guess, you know, this was not wildly irresponsible. What First of all, she married Eric Trump, so let's just, <laughs> this, this on Fox And I don't know what you tell the people that live at the southern border. I guess they better arm up and get guns and be ready, and maybe they're going to have to start taking matters into their own hands. Okay. I, okay, so how is that not <laughs> fire in a crowded theater inciting violence? But but the, you're right. Like that's the the photo op, the inflammatory rhetoric. That's the right way. Right, right. You're right. Somebody ha talking about policy, about root causes. Right, and, right. It, it's just it really is endlessly infuriating. Right. That then yeah, and also right. so, a, a, it, it, a, a, something that's been going on for a zillion years is suddenly Kamala Harris's fault. Right. Right, right. And we and we saw that a couple, you know, a month or so ago. There, you know, there was a couple of headlines. You know, why won't Biden, you know, fix the Middle East? Well, it's kind of complicated. It's been going on for about seven American presidents. Um, but, you know, and, hey, you know, and, what's, and Harris, you, know, you know, what's a start. They got rid of their right wing corrupt crook. That's Net, right. Netanyahu, yeah, that's right. And we got rid of our right wing corrupt crook. So that's a start. Yeah. But a lot of the Harris coverage was classic example of, you know, what are Republicans angry about? Right. Republicans gave uh, bad reviews for her trip. So the press decided the trip was a failure. Yeah. And we've seen that over and over. And the point you 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 made early on that I had highlighted in my column, this really weird me media narrative that because she's being substantive, because she's taking on 
you know, border immigration, because she's uh, serving as a point person for the democratic response to all these voter suppression laws, that's being, that is over and over as being portrayed as bad news for her. This is the most cynical process oriented way to view politics. Yep. I mean, what did Mike Pence do for four years? I don't think anyone has any idea. So here we have the first woman, the first uh, vice president of color come in, take on these extraordinary responsibilities and the cynical press is, oh, this is bad news because, you know, it's probably going to fail. Yeah. I mean, that is just, oh, I hate it. I, I, know, hate, it, I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So to your, to your point, uh, Brad Raffensperger, former Republican, Georgia Secretary right, of State. Right. Well, not he's, he's still a Republican. Right. But anyway, the continuing really. false, he yeah. tweeted, the continuing false claims of a stolen election have led to violent death threats, intimidation, claims of prison time coming for election workers. They keep coming. Real leaders need to take steps to stop it. So far, they haven't. Uh, from yeah. Reuters, and as you tweeted, Eric, you said the lies are producing death threats, but Reuters won't call them lies. I mean, uh, his wife is getting death threats. I mean, this yeah. is, and this is the point, is it is ongoing. And the, the press is, you know, failure to call that out is, is just, is helping it continue, right? Yeah, I mean, that Georgia Republican, remember at the height of that, you know, the, the controversy in, in Georgia in January, we all remember him standing on the steps of the indoor at the Capitol beseeching, um, you know, uh, I think it was him, beseeching Trump to stop this, drop, stop the insanity. These people are going to, uh, they're going to be, uh, be up late at night if they're waiting for Trump to do the right thing or the Republican Party to do the right thing. Yes, the, the, the big lie is just not only gained momentum, it's become the cornerstone of the Republican Party. But And so that was a very interesting good Reuters piece talking about how election officials across the country are becoming the target of these Death threats and these harassment campaigns, uh, but they would. The, but that Reuters story would not call them lies. They wouldn't call it yeah. use it in the headline, and they wouldn't use it in the body. And uh, a, a week or so ago, I pointed to the Washington Post. I said they're still using falsehoods, talking about this. Yeah. I mean, we talked about that for four years, not calling Trump a liar. We've talked about it with the big lie. The good news is New York Times, some of these other news organizations, yeah. CNN, is, are being much more aggressive. You have to be accurate. We cannot have these silly word games. Put away the thesaurus. Just tell the American people what's going on. It goes so it's really just it's really disconcerting to see a hugely important player like the Washington Post talking about falsehoods in the we're, we're almost in the summer of 2021. Right. Well, I mean, it goes to your larger piece, which was great, and we linked to it. Is stop calling the Arizona charade an audit. It's a fraud. It yeah. and you said as the fraud it spread to other states. And it becomes clear that hardcore Republican fanatics will stop at nothing in their pursuit of overturning the 2020 election. It's imperative the press undertake a course correction, stop calling these partisan sham events audits. They're not going away, and the press needs a better, more exact way to describe them. By adopting the GOP audit language, journalists are doing the right wing's bidding and undermining confidence in U.S. elections. Um, that You say by using audit, the press tends lends an undeserved air of legitimacy to these clown proceedings. And yeah. thank you, Eric. That that's you know, and that's what I'm saying is just this, this is dangerous because it's spreading to other states and the violent oh. threats are becoming more you know are becoming are multiplying. Correct. Yeah, and the, the, and the reason the audits are spreading is this is going to become the infrastructure for 2022 and 2024. Yes, We've yeah. talked about this before. This is going to be the Republican backstop for when they lose elections. Oh, we lost. We're going to plan B and they're going to have all these procedures uh, set up. And the, the reason the audit is a problem is for the casual news consumer. Well, audits seems very specific and very precise. Well, they're just going to recount the votes. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. What they're doing in Arizona obviously has nothing to do with recounting votes. They're looking for strains of bamboo. They're looking for all kinds of stuff. And, and election officials who have been interviewed, they all say this is not in any way, shape or form a technical term of an audit. And again, I point out in my piece, some news organizations are doing better than others. CNN calls it a partisan review uh, of the ballots yeah. and things like that. But, but you know, I, I, I've written about this since Trump was inaugurated, right? Words matter, language matters. It, and, and the reason we're not seeing clear language is because the press is afraid. They're afraid of the, you know, being hit with a liberal media bias charge. Yeah. Uh, 
And so oh. they tiptoe around the truth. And but, this is not an audit, and they're going to spread all over the country, and we can't keep calling them audits. But, yeah, but real quick, this is the most important thing you write that people need to understand. Note a legitimate post-election audit of Maricopa County was conducted one week after yep. last year's election. That's to say a multi-party audit board conducted a hand count of ballots from a sample of randomly selected voting precincts, compared them with results from voting machines for Arizona's largest county. The audit uncovered not a single ballot discrepancy. The county also hired two separate independent firms to perform a forensic audit of the voting equipment and found nothing amiss. What's happening in Arizona is not a recount either. Recounts typically occur when there's an infinitesimal margin of victory. Joe Biden won Arizona by 10,000 votes. Um, right. They said a margin of 10,000 votes is an off-the-charts landslide for a recount. So it's not any of those terms. So thank you. For, right. You know, from And they've done all of that in all these states. Hand counts, recounts, yep. audits. You know, anyway. Yep. But in real quick, and you said you, you tweeted uh, Chuck Grassley, ranking member of Senate Judiciary, says the GOP won't go along with issuing subpoenas for bar or sessions testimony. Of course not. You said today's GOP would have refused Watergate subpoenas. Thank you. Just do it. Right. Let's stop threatening. Absolutely. And, and I have a, a piece up this morning at Press Run Media about this is worse than Watergate. This would yes, be yes. like if the Justice Department had planned the break in. That, Amen. That's what Amen. we're looking at here. Amen. I said this is way not Friday. I said this is way worse than Watergate. Um, and it's gotten worse over the weekend with the new revelations. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Eric, great stuff as always. Um, my uh, 1940s telephone says uh, <laughs> goodbye to yours. <laughs>